I'm gonna tell you guys everything that I learned about carotid endorectomy. Since this was my first time, and since I was on call and there was two surgeries, they got backed up. We had power outages during the day, which pushed the surgeries back. We had a fire that caused the power outages. It's crazy, guys. And I'm gonna tell you guys what I learned about carotid endorectomies when I wake up. But I just worked 16 and a half hours, so I gotta go to bed. Good morning, everyone. And today, I'm gonna be telling you about the new surgery that I learned called a carotid endorectomy. I learned how to monitor during this surgery as an EEG technologist. Now this is kind of one of my first introductions into intraoperative neuromonitoring, which is a subset of my little specialty called neurodiagnostic technologist. If you're new to this as well, the first question you may be asking is, well, Jared, what is a carotid endorectomy? So first you gotta know about the carotid artery. It's used to take your pulse, one of the best places to take your pulse, the carotid artery. Over time, plaque builds up in these arteries and it blocks the blood flow to the brain and that could be very dangerous. So a surgeon sometimes will clean up this plaque in the carotid artery and that procedure is called a carotid endorectomy. So intraoperative neuromonitoring is ordered on these patients. Now that involves an EEG technologist hooking up the surgery patient with electrodes on the left side and the right side. And they use a special montage that shows the left side and the right side, leaving out the central electrodes, leaving out the A's, leaving out the T1, T2, just the left and the right side electrodes. And the reason for that is the EEG technologist when in the operating room has to constantly monitor the brain activity and make sure there's not over 50% attenuation or slowing on one side of the brain. So we have to make sure that they're equal. That way each side of the brain is getting good blood flow and the patient will not have a stroke. That is your main goal. Make sure the patient gets through the surgery safely. So my good friend Lewis, he took me in to a surgery. He did EEGs at Yale before, super smart guy. And he taught me everything to know about doing a carotid endorectomy as a EEG technologist just doing the monitoring part so we can help the surgeon make sure the patient is safe. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to take a list of all these different things that will happen during the surgery and you have to document very well on the record. You have to document when each of these things happen. Now the first thing that should be documented on the EEG is when time out comes. So that's when all the surgery team comes together and they review, make sure this is the right patient, the right surgery on the right side. So they just pretty much reviewing and all coming together and agreeing that this is the right patient and that is called time out. So you're gonna wanna document that. All right, so it was getting too dark out there. The bugs were going crazy. So I just came in and we're gonna finish the rest of the video. So another thing that you're gonna to wanna to document on the record is draping whenever they drape the patient. And then after that, you're gonna to wanna to mark the incision time. So the incision time is very important. That's when you know the incision is made and they're getting started with the surgery. As the EEG technologist doing the intraoperative neuromonitoring, you're going to want to set up close to the anesthesiologist because they're going to be giving the patients all different types of things like heparin, which is another important thing that you have to write down. That's kind of like a blood thinner. Something else that the anesthesiologist gives to the patient is called SIVO. It's a gas type substance that sedates the patient during the surgery so they're not awake during you know getting plaque cleared out of their carotid artery no one wants to be awake during that so those levels have to be documented the three things that are constantly documented are the patient's blood pressure the patient's heart rate and the SIVO levels which is going to be on the anesthesiologist screen and you're going to be able to see what it is on there so you're going to want to document those three things every five minutes is ideal uh, it depends on your place. Just in my experience, from you know my one experience here, it, they said to document it every five minutes. Now the SIVO gas, the anesthesia that's given to the patient, what it does to the EEG is that it creates kind of like a burst suppression pattern, which might worry you a little bit if you've never seen it, a patient on sedation like that before. If you see it, there's gonna be periods of pretty much totally flat, totally attenuated, but as long as it's symmetric and the total attenuation isn't for a super long period of time, then you're pretty good. You just wanna make sure it's symmetric. That's gonna happen with sedation, especially the SIBO gas, and other things like propofol as well. That'll definitely 
give you like a little burst suppression pattern if you use enough sedation. So the next important thing that you have to write down in your report at the end of the surgery is clamp time. So when does the clamp go on? And once it goes on, this is when you really need to pay attention. If you weren't paying attention before, really pay attention. Because if there's gonna be any changes in the EEG, it's most likely to happen once clamped. Pretty, pretty fast after getting clamped too. So really watch within that first 30 seconds, that first minute, that first five minutes. Those are the most important times to be, don't be checking your phone guys, don't be looking off. The surgeon is actually probably gonna be asking you about it, especially if they just clamp. So if you're slacking, the surgeon's gonna keep you on your toes. Guys, this is serious, this is surgery. Can't have people stroking out here. So what you're gonna look for is if there's more than 50% attenuation on one side and slowing, you're gonna to wanna to tell the surgeon so that way you notify them. Also document it on the EEG that you notify the surgeon. Either it's within normal limits, it's totally symmetric on each side, or if there's a 50% difference, annotate on the record that you notify the doctor or the surgeon and that way they can do what is called a shunt. So you're also gonna to wanna to keep track of the shunt time, and the shunt time helps fix it so that there's not any stroke out that happens. Very important, guys. After the whole surgery, everything's done, you're gonna to wanna to stay for one specific thing. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the patient can move their contralateral side. So if the surgery was on the right side, this artery, you're gonna to wanna to make sure they can use their left arm and, and leg, left arm and leg because the right side of your brain controls the left side of your body and the left side of your brain controls the right side of your body. I know it's kind of not like super intuitive, but just remember opposites, guys, opposites. So if you did a good job of intraoperative neuromonitoring in this carotid endorectomy case, your patient will be able to move their contralateral side and they didn't stroke out. That is the goal, guys. Keep your patient safe. Now, if there's a freak accident and something ends up going wrong with like a super new surgeon or something, you're gonna wanna make sure that you always have been documenting on the EEG that you're updating the surgeon, you're letting them know the updates on the EEG, especially if they ask, you're gonna wanna say, you're gonna wanna document whether you said it was within normal limits or if there was a big change and that they need to shunt. So it has to be documented that you did your due diligence, you told the surgeon, and then if, if everything's documented and something goes wrong and the surgeon didn't figure it out, well, at least you did your job and that's all we can ask for, being a surgeon above our pay grades. So this was kind of my first experience with a carotid endorectomy and I thought it was super cool. I really want to do it again and I'll definitely have more opportunities, so I'm super happy about that. It's, it's a lot more interesting. Once you've done a few routine EEGs or a few hundred routine EEGs, you kind of look for something else, you know? You want to have something else that's exciting. So I'm very grateful to my hospital for letting me have this experience, and I hope to do more in the future. So I honestly think I could do one by myself, but our hospital always has two people watching the EEG during a surgery at all times. That's how we operate. And that way, it's actually really smart because that way a mistake is very hard to come by if you have multiple trained people watching the EEG and that way people never stroke it out. And that's the goal, guys. Keeping the patient safe, that is the main priority. So I'm super happy that I'm learning how to do this. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like button. This was my first experience doing a carotid and direct to me. What, what has your guys' experience been with intraoperative neuromonitoring? I'm sure some of you do this a lot or specialize in this. You could add some good feedback in the comments. I'd really appreciate that. And I will see you guys on the next video.